Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my Q&A with you guys. So uh, I hit 3,000 subscribers a few weeks back, posted up a video to say thank you for that. Uh, we also did a giveaway, which I'll be announcing the winners of at the end of this. Uh, and yeah, I, did, I asked you guys to send me your questions, so I'm going to go through and answer some of them. So, uh, right, let's see. Sort by newest first. Right, shit, they've gone. Right, so Mindy from Mindy's Book Journey said, My question is, what is your favourite vegan dish? And also, does Biggie love lying in a pile of clean laundry as much as my Loki and Freya? My cats will not leave me alone as I try to put away laundry. Yeah, Biggie likes laundry as well. He, I think he likes the warmth of it. Um, and also, I guess it must smell like me or he must associate my clothes with me. So he'll like just sit on... Basically, I, I wash my clothes. Uh, hang them up to dry and then he'll either sit on the dryer sometimes or if I if they're finished drying I'd like stack them on the bed and put them away throughout the day and He'll sit on those and like I can then no longer put them away because he's sitting on them um, And her other question. What's your favorite vegan dish? Oh, there are so many like I probably like mac and cheese. That's one of my go-to ones jalapeno mac and cheese uh, I never used to like mac and cheese before going vegan, but the the, the vegan recipe of it is delicious uh, I am partial to Beyond Burgers as well. So like homemade Beyond Burger, maybe. Okay uh, Misa Bookworm said da -da -da. How do you get inspired to write? I admire your ability to write so many books and about so many different things So I'd love to know more about your inspiration How did you get confident enough in your writing that you felt like you could publish it or anything related to writing and becoming a writer that you would be willing to share and She's actually one of the competition winners although I don't think she saw my comment So I'm gonna have to leave her another one. So Misa if you're watching this Reach out to me, dankabain at hotmail.com. Let me know you have won the books you asked for, which were formerly and no rest for the wicked. So how do I get inspired to write? Um, I just make it a part, it's like a part of my life. So like, I'm, and I'm very much a creature of habit and I have a routine. So I just sort of sit down and write. In terms of getting inspiration, I never really suffer from like writer's block per se, but what happens is because I have so many different like projects on the go at any time, if I get stuck on one, I just move on to another and then, you know, eventually, when I'm, yeah, by the time that I've finished whatever I switch to, I'm ready to switch back to it, you know? So that's how I kind of keep it feeling fresh as well. Uh, how I got confident enough to publish. I'd had some copies of my books printed, um, but not really published. They were just like available to myself and my family. And then um, I was just submitting to various publishers and I submitted to a publisher called Book Trope, which is uh, alas no longer in existence. Uh, and they accepted my first novella, No Rest for the Wicked, for publication. So I published a few books through those. Uh, then they went out of business and uh, No Rest of the Wicked moved to Dragon Moon Press. Uh, in Circle Publications picked up Driven. So I think it's just part of that, like, there's a lot of validation that comes from a small press, um, you know, agreeing to publish your work. And so I think once I'd published with a small press, I felt um, confident enough in my writing to self-publish, but also I knew a lot about the um, like the actual public publishing process. Joel Swagman says, do you have trouble balancing your social media with your reading time, or does booktube on balance cause you to read more or read less? I don't think it really affects how much I read. Um, again, I am a very much a creature of habit, so um, what I used to do is I used to read when I smoked, uh, but I've quit smoking, so now I just, I guess, read when I vape. Um, but like every 45 minutes I'll have a little reading break and um, just chip away at books like that. Um, listen to audiobooks and stuff as well. Um, I don't think I have trouble balancing social media with my reading time. Maybe with my writing time at some times. Um, but that's a totally different story. Uh, big Hard Books and Classics, Al said, uh, Are you still considering a move to France? So, this is a difficult question, but I guess not. Um, because basically, for those who didn't know, before COVID-19 hit, my plan was I want to move out of where I live now. And I was planning on seeing if I could go and stay at my dad's house in France for a while. Um, and then, you know, continue to freelance, put some money away, etc, etc. But basically, during COVID-19, I've managed to squirrel away enough to put down a deposit on a house. Especially because the government's bringing back 5% mortgages. Um, so I will probably be buying a house here in High Wycombe. Uh, I mean, I'd love to have two houses and be able to go between the two. But um, yeah, at the moment, like just even international travel in general looks like a bit of a no-go until probably sometime next year. So yeah, that plan has kind of gone by the wayside, I guess. But we'll see. 
Alex from the Bookish Report says, I want to know if food will continue to feature heavily in the future, Dainsley Harriet. Uh, yes, I will try and do my best. Uh, I can only really show you when I make food, and quite often when I'm by myself, I just can't be bothered to cook anything particularly ex exciting or ambitious, you know? So uh, I need to make a note of doing it more for Susie, and actually in particular in, in like uh, filming it, because I keep forgetting, especially because I do my vlogs like this on the tripod now, so I, I don't tend to have just the camera to hand, you know? But um, it's steak night tomorrow night, vegan steak night, so I might film for that. Jason of Jason's Weird Reads says, How did you develop your love of reading? Was there a family member who influenced you or did you come into it on your own? Uh, I always loved reading and I kind of grew up around books. My grandparents used to take books out of the library for me when they used to look after me, uh, which happened also whenever I was ill. So like all my cosy memories of childhood, like having a cold or something, curled up on the sofa at my grandma and granddad's place, like playing Monopoly and reading books and stuff. So um, they were quite influential, but both my mum and my dad both read quite a lot. I think they both read less now than they used to. Uh, in, my dad in particular, he used to always have like old sci-fi books around the house, but I don't think he really reads much these days. Okay, Charlie's asked some questions. Number one, do you favor any of your books over others? Yes, I always favor my most recent release. Um, I think it's just because it's freshest in my mind, I guess. I mean, it may change because something like me, I'm really proud of me and it took years and years to do. So I think it's gonna be hard for my next few books to top that you know oh biggie's behind me doing a massive yawn but generally i favor my my most recent books number two what is your writing process i sit at the keyboard and type until my fingers bleed uh i think that was ernest hemingway who basically said that <laughs> i think he said typewriter obviously he wasn't there on his fucking macbook yeah i have this thing called the schedule where i work in 45 minutes loops and it's generally uh 15 minutes of my stuff and then 30 minutes of work or in the evenings i quite often do 15 minutes of my stuff 15 minutes of work 15 minutes of booktube and my own work time is split into writing tidying and uh what's the other one computer stuff it's a complicated schedule sort of system, but it works for me. Question number three, when did you decide you wanted to be a writer? Uh, when I was about 14 or 15, I think. I mean, I guess the pivotal moment was when I was 18, 19, because uh, I took a year out. I went to sixth form and hated it, and then I went to college and studied computing, and then the natural progression would have been to study computing at university, and I would actually apply to do a load of web development courses, and I realized I didn't want to do that, and I'd be unhappy if I did. Uh, what I wanted to do was pursue my writing, and especially like my first novel, the one that has never been published, uh, Annie it was called, uh, that I wrote most of that in college. I used to just take my notebook in and pretend I was taking notes and I'd be writing my novel, and I kind of thought, this to me is a sign that I need to focus on the, the writing and not the computer stuff, you know? And question number four, simply put, how be thee? I'm okay, I guess. I have a big spot on my face there and also there and a mouth ulcer a bit. And yesterday was a bad anxiety day. So today I only had, 40, I had 14 hours of sleep because I was sort of catching up because anxiety makes you so tired and nobody, nobody ever talks about how tired you are after a panic attack. But anyway, other than that, that's all in the past. Today, I think I'm doing okay. And a Jamba2424 said, how much Asimov do you plan on reading, even all of his non-fiction? Yeah, eventually. I actually joked to Mara from Books I Woe recently. I think she's doing like a Nora Roberts read-along or something where she's, I can't remember whether it's her or what, J.D. Robb, I think is the other name. Anyway, Mara from Books Like Woe is gonna be reading all the books by a particular author, and I joke that I'm gonna be doing the same with Asimov, although I am kind of doing the same with Asimov. Uh, it's just gonna be a long and arduous journey. He wrote in nine of the 10 major Dewey Decimal System categories, so got a big old mixture there, and like 300 books or something, but I do eventually plan on reading it all, and it is all on my like official wish list. So yeah, competition winners. As I said earlier, uh, Misa Bookworm is one, and if you're watching, please email me, danecobain at hotmail.com. I also replied to your comment below. Uh, and if you did email me, please email me again, because I, di I didn't get it. And our other re uh, winner is Jason's Weird Reads, who won uh, Meet and Formally. So I've already sent those off to Jason, actually. I don't know if they've arrived yet. I'm sure he'll let us know. But yeah. That was my Q&A for hitting 3,000 subscribers. Thank you to everyone who's hit that subscribe button. Uh, big thanks to everyone in particular who sent in questions. It was a lot of fun. Even though this is the second time I filmed it. I think Mindy's question was the only question I hadn't filmed the first time round. And then I had a hard drive crash. So we're refilming, but it's fine. <laughs> and as always, well, if you've got any further questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer those as well. In the meantime, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.